Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome back to Man vs Film. This is a top 10 of movies that you can watch right now on Amazon Prime UK for the month of September 2017. So let's just get started. Number 10 is Fatal Attraction. Happily married New York lawyer Dan Gallagher has an affair with his colleague Alex and the two enjoy a love weekend while Dan's wife and kid are away. But Alex will not let go of him and she will stop at nothing to have him for herself. Just how far will she go to get what she wants? Fatal Attraction is probably most notable for bringing in the, the words buddy boiler to the lexicon and it is there simply because of this movie but the movie offers a whole lot more. It's a kind of parable, much in the way that uh, slasher movies are for, for looking after your kids and being uh, good natured as this is too. Not cheating on your wife or the extreme worst case scenario will be Alex, this woman who has a tenuous grip on uh, reality because of things that are personal uh, life that are, are affecting her and she puts all her attention onto this one guy who just does not want her and kind of resents her a little bit even though he's the person in the wrong completely for doing what he's done. This is a movie that although has been mocked in several other movies is still a very good movie and one that you probably haven't watched in a long while or ever. Number nine, Interview with the Vampire. A vampire named Lestat takes a liking to Louis and offers him the chance to become a creature of the night, a vampire. Louis must learn from Lestat the ways of the vampire. Based on Anne Rice's novel, the, this stars Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Christian Slater, Kirsten Dunst and is basically about a vampire who is relaying his life story to a journalist, a century's worth of, of life and what he's accomplished, what he's seen throughout his times and is very fun and interesting. It's nice to see Tom Cruise in a, a role that's not as clean cut as we're used to seeing him in. Kirsten Lentz is very good as a young girl vampire. Brad Pitt is excellent uh, as Louis the vampire who kind of resents that his current life is and it is a very interesting film. Number eight is Kingpin. Roy Munson was the state bowling champion in 1979. Unfortunately, soon after he earned that honour, his hand was removed after trying to cheat the wrong guys. For the last 17 years, he's been living a very unhappy life selling bowling equipment with a rubber hand. And now he meets Ishmael, a young Amish man who is a natural born bowler. The Farley brothers were in such a rich vein of form when they came out with this movie. The Dumb and Dumber, There's Something About Mary, I Think Kingpin, is one of their best movies. It is hilarious and it's down to the performance of Bill Murray who is outstanding and definitely MVP of this movie but Woody Harrelson does very good and Randy Quaid is excellent as well. The jokes come thick and fast, it is my type of humour, it is a movie that I love that seems to be relegated to the forgetful bin for some reason. It's funny, it's interesting, it's got amazing performances. I think you should check it out. Number seven, From Dusk Till Dawn. After a bank heist, the brothers Richie and Seth Gecko plan on heading to Mexico to evade the arrest. At a motel, the boys kidnap the Fuller family and their RV and Seth takes them hostage. And the five successfully cross the border and they pull into a bar to rest the night until Seth and Richie get picked up in the morning. When I saw From Dust to Dawn in the 90s in the cinema, I had no expectations whatsoever. I hadn't seen anything about it. I just went into the movie and this is one of those movies that 45 minutes in of a 90 minute movie, it makes a complete left turn that you did not see coming at all. And even now, knowing what happens in it, it's still as jarring as ever, but I love it. I love the crime-centric first half of the movie and the genre-specific monster movie that comes in the second half. There are some great performances. I think George Clooney does excellent in a, a kind of sort of bad but good-ish role. He's a bad man trying to help people survive. Uh, I think Harvey Keitel and his family are excellent. Uh, that left turn I think is just tremendous and just they just throw everything at the screen which you've got to like the fact that they did this and I think it is a movie that it's got to be seen to be believed. Number six is Red Eye. This is the story of a young resourceful heroine named Lisa Reisert who hates to fly 
but the terror that awaits her on the night flight from Miami has got nothing to do with her fear of flying. I don't really want to tell you too much about the plot of this one because I think it's best discovered while watching the movie. Starring Rachel McAdams as our young heroine, she boards this flight, innocuous as it would be, she's got a fear of flying, sitting next to her is the charming passenger of Killian Murphy and then once the plane takes off, things take a rather sinister turn. It is basically these two people having conversations but it's got a grandiose effect of what's going to happen during this conversation. They're locked within an aeroplane craft, miles up in the air and she can't get away, she's trapped and it's one of these kind of thrillers I'm trying to skirt around the edges and not waste the story for you. I think it's very good, it's very entertaining, it's a nice quick thriller. Number five is Goon. Labelled an outcast by his brainy family, a bouncer overcomes long odds to lead a team of underperforming misfits to semi-pro hockey glory, beating the crap out of everything that stands in his way. I recently did a review for Goon on my channel if you want to check it out, but basically I had a lot of problems with it the first time I watched it. Second time round, I kind of enjoyed it a lot more. I liked the character of Doug the Thug. I liked the, the sort of second half of the movie more than the first half when he gets to the hockey team and starts to galvanise this team of losers together to become winners. You know this kind of story. But yeah, the first half's still a little bit distasteful for me. You can find out why in my review, but I think it is ultimately a fun movie. Number four is Constantine. The story of a reverent supernatural detective, John Constantine, who has literally been to hell and back. Constantine must team up with a sceptical policewoman to stop a demon who may just destroy their current landscape of Los Angeles. They take a lot of liberties with the movie Constantine, and I'm fine with that. I read the Hellraiser books and I like those. I know the Liverpudlian detective as his base. Um, gets changed a lot in this movie and I don't really mind it. It's been Hollywoodized, which generally happens with a lot of things. Keanu Reeves is Constantine. He is pretty good in the movie. The effects are pretty fun and the story is about some sort of lost artifact from uh, way back in the past that can bring forth demons and things. It's the kind of story you've seen lots of times before, but the effects elevate this. The kind of detective aspect of the movie I think is pretty good and I think Keanu Reeves is pretty decent as Constantine as well. Number three, School of Rock. Down and out rock star Dewey Finn gets fired from his band and he faces a mountain of debts and depression. He takes a job as a fourth grade substitute teacher in an uptight private school where his attitudes and hijinks have a powerful effect on his students. School of Rock is fantastic. It is a cliched story, the kind of likes you've seen lots done before, but the fact that the kids in this are natural and look as if they're having a lot of fun, Jack Black plays Jack Black, for lack of a better expression, he is, well, himself, and that is awesome in the movie. There is a, an obvious love for music throughout this film movie. It's full of toe-tapping tunes, songs that you know inside out and you think would be kind of cliched, but they fit perfectly with the movie. And this movie just leaves me with a smile on my face every time I watch it. Number two is Goodfellas. Henry Hill is a small-time gangster who has just taken part in a robbery with Jimmy Conway and Tommy DeVito, two other gangsters who have their sights set a little bit higher than their current standings. Goodfellas is a movie I know inside out and every time I put it on, I'm surprised by how much it just draws me into the story, has me captivated by the energy, the characters, this lifestyle that just makes me block out everything else that's going on and just envelops me fully into the movie. I think Ray Liotta is terrific, as is Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, everybody does it. It is a quick, smart movie that moves along so fast, tells a really interesting tale, and is something that never gets boring watching. You know, it just constantly has that great rewatchable factor. So if you haven't seen it in a while, get on it and check it out. And number one is Arrival. Linguistics professor Louise Banks leads an elite team of investigators when gigantic spaceships touch down in 12 locations around the world. As nations teeter on the verge of global war, Banks and her crew must race against time to find a way to communicate with the extraterrestrial visitors. Arrival was a terrific movie in the cinema. And watching it at home again, it's not lost any of its power. I think it is a, an extremely interesting and smart 
movie, I, I think it, it's got some great comments to make about time. What's the best way to spend your time? Love and love lost. Is it better to have loved and never lost at all? Is a question that comes up throughout the movie. And it gives you a kind of definite answer on it as well. Or, or my interpretation is, is it gives you a definite answer. I think it's got terrific performances, terrific special effects. And it's a movie that is very rewarding and does stick with you long after seeing it, which is always a good sign of a movie. I think Arrival is terrific and I, that is why it is my number one and my highest recommendation for you to watch this month. So thanks for watching my video on Amazon Prime's top 10 for September 2017. Is there anything I've missed? Is there something that should have been on my list? Hopefully you'll find something that you haven't seen before or a movie that is going to spark your interest. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man Versus Film.